let's start with the demo now so from the topology perspective this is how it looks like there are three main components number one which is i'm highlighting here is the kubernetes cluster number two is where i have the attack infra and number three is nothing but the panorama with the specific kubernetes plugin now here in this demo i'm highlighting a cn series firewall running as a kubernetes service but the same functionality is available on our PA series as well as VM series firewalls. So depending upon if you are using the firewalls in data centers, the appropriate firewall will be PA series. But if you are using to protect your virtualized workloads in private or public cloud, you will use VM series firewall. Now in this particular Kubernetes cluster, I have a compromise app running on a specific workload. This is my on-prem setup and this application is being exposed with a specific IP 10.8.70.221 as a service. When we look at the attack infra, I have an attacker where it will run the attack from 2.70.216 IP. And then in the same infra, I also have a web and LDAP server running. So this is where we'll start the call command with the JNDI query and the entire CN series intra or policies will be managed by Panorama running in on 70.229. We'll start the demo by configuring allow all policy first. With allow all, the attack will successfully go through. And as part of the attack, the first step would be we'll run a call command to the exposed service IP, which is 70.221 for the compromise app. And within that, as part of our JNDI LDAP query, we are basically inserting a duplicate command to download a file to the temp directory, which is nothing but a malware-sample file inside the temp directory of compromise app. So let's verify that. On my left-hand side is the attack server from where I'll be running the cull command. Here, the bottom portion will show the logs on the transaction. On right-hand side is where I have the compromise app. As you can see, I have a three node cluster. Within that, I have the compromise app running and then it is being exposed on a particular .221 IP with AT service. Bottom portion is where I have, I'm inside the application and then you can see that in the term directory, I don't have the sample file downloaded. So let's run the attack and see what happens here. So I have executed the attack. You can see the transactions into end transactions as part of the log here. And if I verify the time directory now, you can see that the malware sample file just got downloaded inside the temp directory. Now let's look at the policy and the traffic log on Panorama. Okay, we are looking at a Panorama. And as you can see that we have CN series being managed by this particular Panorama. If you look at the policy, the only policy that I have turned on is allow all pretty much allow everything through CN series and the monitor log shows all the traffic like DNS, LDAP, as well as web browsing, which is allowed through the firewall. Okay, let me now go over our defense in depth approach that I talked about in the beginning. For that, let's look at first the inbound protection. How do you protect all your applications such as log4j from inbound attacks? And for that, the policy I'm highlighting here, it shows that for the destination, which is log4j compromise app, I have the services as well as traffic allowed, but when it comes to the production profile, I have the production profile configured to strict, as well as I also have wildfire turn on for additional protection. And within the strict profile, if we look at the signatures, you can see that for a specific CV, this is for log4j, I have the threat IDs as part of that signature, which means that as soon as now we rerun the attack, CN series will look at and it will block that attack at the first step itself. So let's go ahead and run the attack. We are back to our attack infra and from here again from the attack server, I'm relaunching the attack. So since this will get blocked, we should not be seeing any logs here at the bottom and then again the malware.sample let me just first down delete that and we'll verify that it doesn't get downloaded again so 
So as you can see, I don't have the sample again. So let's rerun the attack. As you can see that the response we got that the connection got reset. There was no debug log. The attack was blocked. And if I look at the temp directory, you can see that malware sample file is not being downloaded. Threat log within Panorama shows that the attack was successfully blocked. So you can see that the attack that got identified by the threat log. Let's look at the detail view. And within the detail view, you can see that, you know, it was the attack got matched with the inbound policy. And at the first step at the inbound connection, we were able to identify the threat and successfully blocked it. Now, let's go ahead and look at the outbound protection and so the best practices that you can use while configuring advanced URL filtering and DNS security. For outbound protection, my policy, which I'm highlighting here, looks like this. So we have inside the action category, I have anti spyware with the specific profile configured. This is for my DNS security. And then for URL filtering, I also have a specific outbound URL profile configured. So let's take a look at how these settings are being done. So within anti-spyware for log4j, make sure that as part of your DNS policies, you have the command and control dynamic DNS, grayware, and malware, along with phishing domains. All of these are being configured to, policy action is configured to sinkhole. Now, specifically for the URL filtering, for outbound URL, make sure that for specific categories, like for example, in this specific case, when it comes to grayware, that's being blocked also make sure that you have the malware that is being blocked and then phishing should be also blocked our inline ml will make sure that phishing detection as well as javascript exploit detection is on so this is where the inline machine learning will kick in and block any of those outbound malicious activities so with that we can go ahead and run the attack again and then we we'll look at the logs in panorama okay let's go ahead and rerun the attack for outbound prediction so let's execute the cull command again and as you can see that there is no logs here in the debug log and even in the time directory there is no more malware sample we saw the result came back and the connection was again reset back here We'll go ahead and quickly verify the log on Panorama. And this time we'll look at the URL filtering log. URL filtering log on Panorama shows that the action taken was block URL. And we can see here in the detail view that the block outbound policy was being matched. And at the bottom, you can see the transactions that happened, that the connection was terminated. Here the detail view shows what really happened, how we identified the app and how the connection was terminated now the last thing that we can also do is one more policy that we can add based on the application identification or app id is add the applications like ldap and rmi iiop and make sure that the outbound connection from these applications is restricted so just go ahead and block that connection as per on the deny action as deny and that would be the last thing that you can do to recap we just saw how palo alto next gen firewall is your best defense against attack like log 4j and why you shouldn't settle for anything less to stay on top of the latest log 4j analysis and mitigation please do check out our blogs as well as the on-demand replay provided by our unit 42 threat research team thank you so much for watching and i hope this demo was useful